All right, good afternoon once again. This is Dave Nadler with the National Weather Service Office in Peachtree City, Atlanta, here with your second uh, official briefing we've done for now Hurricane Adelia. Um, we'll talk about uh, potential threats and impacts uh, to north and central Georgia. <clears throat> All right, here is um, sort of the latest situation overview as of this afternoon. Um, confidence in the track is increasing, even though there's been some subtle you know, shifts here and there. Um, that's to be expected. Uh, with each, uh, you know, every six hours or so from the National Hurricane Center. Um, what we are expecting across much of the area, especially in central Georgia, uh, the winds picking up, the rain picking up, you know, as the system approaches uh, tomorrow into tomorrow evening. Uh, lesser impacts over, there's going to be a pretty distinct gradient of impacts across the forecast area, um, basically from northwest to southeast. The farther south and east you go, of course, the uh, the potentially uh, worse conditions will get uh, farther west and north. Um, conditions won't be as bad. Um, across metro, obviously with the high population density around Atlanta, um, at this time we're not expecting any crazy like widespread impacts from the actual tropical system. However, that can change if things you know shift a little bit more to the west with the track. But right now for like Atlanta, uh, much of the area just generally sit thinking like up to one inch of rain, peak wind gusts, 20 to 30 mile per hour winds, mainly tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours. Landfall of uh, Delia is expected to be around eight o'clock tomorrow morning in the Florida Big Bend area as it sort of turns to the uh, northwest or northeast, I should say. Um, and that's when around that time, mid morning hours is when we could start seeing some of the stronger winds and the outer rain bands from Adelia that start to pick up and rotate um, across parts of our central Georgia counties um, tomorrow morning. So. Um, right now, we've got, this is the latest tropical storm warnings that are in effect for our counties, along with the tropical storm watches. Um, however, this is more than likely going to change in the next 6 to 12 hours with new data that's coming in. The flood watch as well for a good portion of central Georgia may be shifted a little bit. The amounts of rain, um, the heaviest rain axis has shifted just a little bit to the west compared to what we were talking about earlier today. Um, but we're generally speaking, we're expecting anywhere from in the heaviest rain axis, two to six inches with isolated amounts of up to eight to 10 inches possible um, because the center of the system could drop or could move across um, our southeast counties in central Georgia tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours. So um, that's where the heaviest rain is more than likely going to occur. Um, and so, of course, that's going to increase the, the flash flood risk as well. <clears throat> So here's the latest on um, just Idalia from the National Hurricane Center at 2 p.m. Um, it's a high-end Category 1 hurricane with 90 mile per hour winds moving to the north at about 15 miles per hour now. So it, it is starting to accelerate. <clears throat> and I know you've probably been hearing about this rapid intensification occurring in the next 12 hours or so. Conditions are definitely favorable but, um, before it makes landfall for the system to continue to intensify quite a bit. So. Um, Hurricane Center is still expecting that, um, potentially to be a Category 3 uh, hurricane. With That's max winds about 115 uh, to 120 uh, before it makes landfall early tomorrow morning. Um, I mentioned that the latest forecast uh, track itself has shifted just a little bit to the west from what we were looking at um, even earlier this morning. Um, and remember, impacts, you're looking at the forecast cone, which is that white shaded area. <clears throat> the impacts could be felt well outside of that forecast cone. This is just um, a forecast track and within that white shaded area, basically as you're saying that there's a two thirds chance that the, the center of the system is gonna remain within that white shaded area over the next three to four days. So um, that's all that this particular graphic is, is saying at this point. Mentioned tropical storm watches and warnings are now in effect for portions of our area um, and a flood watch is also in effect. <clears throat> So I wanted to just sort of highlight the threats and impacts on a low to high scale. Um, winds and rainfall are gonna be our primary concern along with flooding. Um, tornado threat, again, if the track shifts just a little bit more to the west and we're on that east northeast side, um, some of those outer rain bands that have uh, potential tornadic and enhanced tornadic risk uh, may start to get into our far southeast counties tomorrow afternoon. Um, so we're gonna have to watch that. Um, <clears throat> that might increase a little bit um, as far as that area that we'll have to watch for tornadoes um, as we head into tomorrow afternoon in the evening hours. So, um, but these are the main concerns, heavy rainfall, flash flooding, river and stream flooding, and of course, 
um, the stronger winds, especially associated with the outer rain bands as they get closer to the center of Idalia are gonna be a, a little bit more intense uh, as the system approaches and moves across the area tomorrow. <clears throat> So this uh, next, this is a graphic that's probably going to be outdated here in the not too distant future. But what I've overlaid is the flood watch in green with the tropical storm watches and warnings for much of the state. Um, the dark red burgundy areas are tropical storm warnings. The lighter red shaded areas are tropical storm watches. Um, some of these areas, um, the tropical storm warnings and watches, especially the warnings, may start to expand to the north and west um, based on the latest guidance and trends that we've been seeing. So. <clears throat> Those of you to the south, just to the south and east of Macon, uh, Warner Robins, uh, Milledgeville, um, we may, you may be under a tropical storm warning soon if you're not already. Um, the flash or the flood watch may need to be expanded just a little bit to the west and north as well, as the heaviest rain axis has shifted just a little bit to the west um, from what we were seeing even earlier today. <clears throat> So here's the latest uh, satellite of uh, Idalia. Uh, on the left is the visible, on the right is infrared. And you can see a pretty well-defined center starting to form. Not a real clear-cut eye just right now, but I think probably within the next three to six hours, that's gonna, that's gonna change uh, on satellites. You really will start to see that symmetric eye wall uh, develop as it continues to intensify as it tracks north um, uh, to the west of, the, uh, of Florida there. <clears throat> Now I wanted to show um, a, a sort of a simulation of radar as the system moves inland and approaches into South Georgia and then turn, starts to turn to the Northeast uh, toward uh, East Central Georgia and into South Carolina. Um, you can see that where the heaviest rain is expected um, north and east of the, of the center, which is that little eye center that you can kind of see as it moves across Florida into South Georgia. You can even see some of the higher resolution models are still showing a pretty well-defined eye as the system moves into South Georgia. So that would indicate that um, it may be, it's, it may still be a hurricane as it gets into South Georgia. Wherever it makes landfall in that Big Bend region, there's not a lot of distance between the water and you know the Florida Georgia state line there. So, um, and if it's accelerating at 15 to 20 miles per hour um, or moving to the North Northeast at 15 to 20 miles per hour, the, um, uh, the de-intensification or the diminishing of the of the system may not occur that fast. So basically um, for anybody that's, you know, west or east and south of uh, Columbus up to McDonough and Henry County to the east along I-20 Greensboro, Washington line, you should be prepared for a pretty significant, you know, brunt of this system with the heavy rain, wind, um, you know, moving across in about a six to 12 hour window or 18 hour window. Um, as we head into tomorrow and tomorrow evening. So um, give you a little bit of a buffer there, even though you may not be any, in any sort of watch, tropical storm watch or warning at this point. Um, if you're to the north and west of where we have those watches and warnings right now, still really keep your guard up for the potential significant impacts from this system, especially with respect to the heavy rainfall and, you know, and the flood potential. Right now, this is the, the latest wind, maximum wind speeds, looking at gusts that we have for the area. This may start to shift a little bit more to the west and north, just depending on the track and the intensity uh, of the system. Again, if this system comes in a little bit more or a little bit stronger than what's anticipated, then these winds are probably gonna be bumped up a notch, maybe 10 to 20 miles per hour uh, higher than what you're seeing right here in this graphic. But as it stands, anywhere south and east of I-85, 20 to 30, Mile per hour wind gusts are expected through the day tomorrow and then increasing 40 plus, even 50 plus mile per hour um, down from Americas to Abbeville up to Dublin, Louisville, Warrington, um, Swainsboro area uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon into the early evening hours. So um, again, 40 to 50 mile per hour winds may not seem like a, lo a lot of wind, but if we start seeing those types of winds over a longer duration of time for like three to four hours and those heavier rain bands, that's when we can start seeing some more significant, you know, trees being knocked down, power outages and things like that. It's more, you know, the extent, the, the intensity of the wind is and the magnitude is a very big deal, but the duration of these of these winds is also going to be a big deal. So um, again, don't this is probably going to change just a little bit over the next six to 12 hours and we'll update everybody um, when we do change this. Um, but right now, this is kind of what we're going for, for uh, peak wind gusts uh, through the day tomorrow uh, and into uh, Wednesday night. 
Again, looking at winds, this is from the National Hurricane Center on the left, showing you where the probability of sustained tropical storm force winds will occur and the most likely time of arrival for those tropical storm force winds. So anywhere in South Georgia, looking around eight o'clock in the morning on, on tomorrow morning, um, and then of course, through the afternoon, expanding to the north and east as the system uh, you know, makes landfall and moves to the north, northeast through the day tomorrow. Um, we kind of did our own little local graphic there on the right, which is subject to change based on the track and the intensity. Um, right now, this is where we have the probability of seeing sustained tropical storm force winds, which is 39 plus miles per hour. Um, not the gust, but just the sustained winds. So again, higher as you head to the south and east, some of these probabilities may increase just a little bit towards Americas, Macon, Warner Robins, Eatonton, Warrington area um, over the next six to 12 hours as the track becomes a little bit more clear cut as to exactly where it's going to go as it approaches landfall um, here overnight. <clears throat> And then again, with the rainfall, we just updated this because earlier today um, we were showing the heaviest rain axis um, a little bit farther to the south and east. Now it's a little bit more west. So folks like from Americas up toward Warner Robins and Macon, Milledgeville, um, up toward Warrington and Augusta, those areas could be in the more heavier rain axis from anywhere from three to as much as eight inches of rain could occur in that area. And then we could see some locally higher amounts um, in these areas as well, just depending on the where the heaviest rain axis sets up and those outer rain bands move through. Um, <clears throat> the graphic on the right is uh, a, an excessive rainfall outlook. Um, anywhere in the slight to especially the moderate risk area is where we have a pretty significant um, chance of seeing flash flooding. So um, be on guard. We start to see, you know, six to eight inches of rain over a short period of time, even in the, in the areas uh, south of the fall line where the uh, soil content is a little bit different than up in far north Georgia, we, could, we are still going to be looking at some problems with flooding and flash flooding. And I wanted to also show this because we have the actual, our actual expected total rainfall really correlates fairly well with the, a few models that are showing the heaviest rain access moving across parts of central Georgia um, tomorrow into tomorrow evening and anywhere from about, again, the amounts are anywhere from about three to seven or eight inches with locally higher amounts. They're pretty consistent amongst a number of different models. So the confidence is starting to increase not only on where the heaviest rain axis is going to occur, but the amounts as well. So um, this is pretty significant rainfall over a relative short period of time um, where we could, again, be looking at some fairly significant flood issues as we head through the day tomorrow into tomorrow night and even into Thursday. Um, as we talk about um, some river and stream flooding, which takes me to my next slide. And this is where, this is a ensemble uh, forecast uh, of expected, um, where we expect some of the uh, forecast points along like the Oconee, the Mogi, and the Agichi rivers. Um, that's just in our area of uh, central Georgia where we could see minor to even moderate flooding occur sometime between tomorrow and the end of the week into the weekend, just depending on, on how much water flows into these rivers and how long it takes for some of these uh, forecast points to actually crest. So um, the rain is one thing, the flash flooding is one thing, the river and stream flooding could be longer duration um, beyond um, you know, the system moving through tomorrow night into Thursday. Um, so we wanted to make people aware, especially south of I-20, east of I-75, um, we could be looking at some pretty um, significant river and stream issues, uh, flood issues uh, through the rest of the week and then in, even into the first part of the weekend. So that's uh, definitely covered a lot of things. Um, summary, basically going back to our first slide is that the confidence in the track is increasing despite some subtle shifts that could occur over the next six to 12 hours. I think the Hurricane Center has a really good grasp uh, of what's, uh, what's, what's um, happening not only with the track and the movement of the system, but the intensity, the rapid intensification is still likely to occur just before landfall. It's in a very favorable area of the water there where that can occur over the next six to 12 hours. Um, the impacts across the area are gonna be pretty significant from Northwest to Southeast. Again, far Northwest Georgia may not see much of anything with respect to rain or any strong winds, but then in parts of central Georgia, especially east of 75, south of I-20, that's where we could really see um, some fairly significant rainfall, flooding, and even um, some pretty significant um, strong winds that could 
uh, occur over a longer period of time, like three to six hours, which could uh, definitely uh, present some problems with trees coming down, power outages and things like that. Um, tropical storm warnings and the watches will probably all merge into one larger area of a tropical storm warnings across a portion of central Georgia later on this evening into the overnight hours. So be on the lookout for those updates and we'll, we'll definitely be sending updates through emails and, and through Slack, um, our chat platform here as things change. Um, and then the flood watch is also in effect for a good portion of central Georgia and that may even expand to the west and north um, with our um, you know, later updates later today through this evening. Um, so that that there's a lot to cover. Just want to make sure folks, especially in central Georgia, just south and east of Atlanta, uh, are really prepared for the potential impacts with this system, especially if Adelia, you know, comes, you know, makes landfall as a major hurricane, which is what it's expected to do early tomorrow morning. Um, so that that's about it at this point. We are we are, we are not scheduling any additional webinars at this point, but we will continue to update you through email, through our chat. And if we do any sort of live, you know, video updates in Slack or something like that, we'll uh, make sure everybody gets sort of that word out so you can watch kind of what we're thinking um, as things kind of evolve overnight into the day tomorrow. So um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.